yo, what's going on, my friends? Uh, this is your boy, Big Murph, again, coming to you live. Today's September the 20th, 2020, and in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to replace your lower control arm bushings on this R50, R52, R53 platform Mini Cooper, Mini Cooper S. Okay, and so uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to go and start by uh, loosening the lug nuts on your front wheels. Uh, prior to jacking up the car. So let's go ahead and do that while the car is still safely on the ground Okay, now I'm going to show you the reason why I'm replacing these lower control arm bushings here um, It's a really common problem on these Mini Coopers The very first thing you will notice is a clunking sound every time you hit some kind of a pothole or you go in and out of a driveway But another way you can tell that the bushings are shot is simply by sticking um, you know, a long uh, lug uh, wrench like I have right here, a breaker bar. And if you try to you know, loosen the lug nut, if you see this wheel <coughs> start to move laterally back and forth here, um, that's how you know these bushings are shot. So let me show you what I'm talking about. As you can see here, I put this on and you watch this wheel move. I mean, you can see just how much it's moving. And I'm not even giving it that much force. And really the wheel is not supposed to be doing that. It's supposed to be you know, pretty stationary if the bushings are really good. Okay, and so the next thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and um, go ahead and jack up the car, put jack stands under it. And I like to use um, you know a piece of um, two by four or something equivalent to put on uh, the jack um, right below the side skirt so that way you don't damage um, you know anything on the bottom of the side skirt um. okay next let's go ahead and remove the wheels okay and so the next thing you want to do is um, I like to go ahead and start spraying all of the you know, joints and bolts um, that I'm going to be removing to take this whole subframe off uh, with some penetrating fluid first um, so that way I can let it sit there while I'm setting everything up and uh, once I get to it it'll be kind of easier for me to remove but before I even do all of that I like to go ahead and place some scrap cardboard all over the uh, concrete there so that way um, I don't make a mess on the driveway when I'm sp um, spraying all these fluids so let's go and do that Yeah, so like I said, let's go ahead and start by, you know, spraying some lubricant. I'm using some PB blaster here. So, you know, we can go ahead and start spraying stuff like this down. Okay, we want to spray this too here. So let's get this here. Spray some of that there. It's really hard to see, but it's really tucked up in here. There's basically a 13 millimeter nut you need to remove. That connects your steering column to your steering rack. You'll need to remove that as you drop the subframe. Everything will come down with it. You don't want to be pulling on the steering column. <laughs> okay, I'm actually underneath the car now, and um, you know if you follow the steering rack up and go to where the uh, steering column attaches to the steering rack here through this U joint, you can see the 13 millimeter nut I was telling you about. And actually, I'm going to get to it now. Uh, it's kind of uh, kind of positioned in a way where I can get to it easier here. So. Um, I'm going to use a ratcheting wrench here as you can see um, and hopefully I can get this off it's kind of hard for me to show you while I'm filming but uh, it, this is pretty much how I'm going to get this off here so I'll pause the video here okay the next thing you want to do is get the car into front end service mode on my car um, I have this air duct that draws air and it feeds it into the uh, um, power steering pump fan, so I need to remove that. I'm also going to remove the power steering um, pump fan itself. Then we'll go ahead and uh, remove the front bumper and the bumper bracket um, to get the car into front and service mode. Okay, and so to remove the front bumper on each side of the car, when you look at the uh, fender well here, um, there's going to be these plastic uh, Phillips head retainers that you need to remove. There's also going to be, uh, if your car has never been touched, it should be an 8mm bolt that runs through here. 
and um, there's also going to be a series of other bolts you need to remove underneath the car. Um, there's going to be some 10 millimeter bolts you need to remove. Uh, a couple of Phillips here that runs along the bottom. Okay, and on the top side here, there's going to be another. I said a T. What is this? T30, I think. Uh, 25 or 30. And um, that's pretty much it for the front bumper. And uh, so we'll show you once we get to that part. Okay, and so after that, then uh, we go ahead and start removing the front bumper. There's going to be a whole bunch of electrical connections on each side that you're going to take off. Uh, so um, you probably start by doing that, I guess. Okay, and the next thing you want to do after you remove the front bumper is you want to remove these 13 millimeter bolts. I think there's a total of like five of them here. Uh, so there's like four nuts and one bolt here, as you can see. And um, there's also going to be a 10 millimeter bolt that holds on to these uh, um, subframe uh, tubes here um, that connect the um, uh, bumper bracket or the bumper support should I say to the uh, subframe of the car so be sure to remove those two 10 millimeter bolts on each side as well and uh, you can go ahead and uh, remove this uh, bumper support okay so the next thing we want to do is remove these two uh, 16 millimeter or 5 8 inches equivalent bolts that hold this crash tube that connects to your subframe after we do that then we'll go ahead and remove the um, lower ball joint there. We'll knock that out with a huge sledgehammer. We'll also remove the tie rod ends there in the back and the linkages that go to the sway bar. And we'll do that for both sides. Okay, and actually what I found easier to do was with the uh, lower control arm, instead of banging this control arm to get it to slide out of the uh, lower ball joint just remove the whole ball joint itself there's two 13 millimeter bolts and you can see you can easily knock off the whole ball joint uh, while still being connected to the control arm so and uh, with the uh, tie rod ends instead of using the pickle fork I'm going to use this uh, uh, two jaw puller here that I had for many many years and we'll see if we can extract that then after that we should be able to get to the uh, um, sway bar end link there as you can see. We'll remove that bolt and uh, after that there's just a few other bolts underneath the hole in the subframe including one 16 millimeter bolt that runs through there and the whole subframe should be able to drop out. Oh yeah we also too got to um, remove this power steering reservoir because the whole thing will come down as one unit. This is connected to this power steering rack, so um, when you drop the subframe, um, if you don't remember to take this out, then you'll just end up ripping the whole hoses and everything off will leak, so don't want it to happen. You also want to be sure to remove this uh, wheel speed sensor um, from uh, this plastic holder here. Otherwise, when you drop the subframe, it'll rip off this whole thing and you'll need a new wheel speed sensor. Uh, so be sure to do that. Okay, and so after we remove the uh, sway bar and links, then the next thing we want to do is uh, let's go ahead and start by um, loosening um, the bolts that hold on to the uh, uh, lower control arm uh, bushing to the uh, frame of the car. So we'll break those loose there. Then we have a whole bunch of 16 millimeter bolts, I believe, that are holding um, on each side uh, these brackets that hold the subframe to the frame of the car. We want to loosen those, but don't remove them. Okay, these ones you can remove. These ones you want to loosen, as well as there's one bolt. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see, but uh, let me uh, position you here. That bolt there also holds the uh, subframe to the frame of the car. You want to loosen that. So you want to loosen that, loosen these, go ahead and remove that. And also, to remove 
this uh, center uh, engine mount bolt. Now, the reason why you want to loosen those and don't remove them is because we want to support the subframe with a jack or a transmission jack of some sort. So that way, once we remove them completely, this heavy ass subframe with the power steering rack and everything else connected to it don't come falling on your face. So that's the reason why. All right, so we pretty much got all the bolts out. Now, before we start dropping the subframe, you also want to slowly lower it just a little bit so you can disconnect the uh, power cables from the power steering pump um, so be sure to do that then you can go ahead and drop the whole subframe and roll it out uh, towards the front of the vehicle so let's go and do that okay here guys so we got both control arms out as you can see and I have the new bushings here matched up t uh, with the old ones here so that way I don't get mixed up. I also mark them here as well with the mileage of when I replace these. Now I just want to show you how bad the old ones are. If you look inside of here, uh, you can definitely see it's just all ripped up. And you can even hear it. Um, yeah, it, shouldn't, it should never move this much. And so uh, the right side was the worst one. And the left side was a little bit better in condition, but still might as well replace them both while you're at it and uh, today is a very special day because I'm also going to be um, flushing and replacing the automatic transmission fluid as well as the filter on this vehicle so um, you know while you have the subframe out it's really a, a good idea to do those things if you also have a bad power steering pump which these fail quite often because they kind of overheat uh, being directly underneath the header. So if you got to replace a lower engine mount, you know, it's a good idea to do that. Well, all of this is kind of you know, out the car. Steering rack, um, sway bar bushings, you know. It's really just convenient that you have everything, you know, all the space, you know. Okay, so the way I'm going to tackle this, I'm going to use two sets of crowbars. One like that and one longer one, maybe like this. And... We're going to try to um, evenly, you know, yank this out of here by using this lip. Um, and so it worked on me before. I did it on my other R53 I have here. But um, that's how I'm going to tackle this one the same exact way. And I have a trick of putting a new bushing in. And I'll show you that uh, once we get this one out. So stay tuned. Okay, and so the trick of getting the new uh, bushing onto the control arm. You want to go ahead and first of all uh, grease the hell out of this um, shaft here where this thing slides onto. So uh, that way it makes it a lot more easier for you to slip that damn thing on here. You want that to go in as smoothly as possible. Then you also want to go ahead and grease up the inside here of this where it slips onto. So just put a whole bunch of grease up in here too. And then after that, uh, Let's go ahead and try to like uh, position this on here of uh, how it's supposed to go in and it's supposed to go in this way here. Uh, I guess these two ends here if you can see uh, kind of align with this inner ball joint here. And so that's how that goes. And uh, maybe give it a couple of taps there to kind of set it in place. And then I'll show you the trick I'm going to use right after this here. Okay, so this is my trick here. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically wedging the control arm to the frame here uh, of the vehicle. Um, I'm using the weight of the vehicle um, to act like, um, you know, kind of like a resistance point here. And uh, basically... I'm going to use the jack to act like a press. So as I pump up my floor jack, um, it's going to press this onto here. 